As we have been moving through the season of Lent, we've been looking at a sequence of stories dealing with the last day of Jesus' life. We've been looking at a sequence of events from the arrest in the garden all the way through Jesus' trial before the Sanhedrin, his appearance before Pilate, and then indeed his now going to the cross. We began by looking at how Judas betrays Jesus. He betrays Jesus for money and he betrays Jesus with a kiss. We then see how the disciples fail Jesus, failing to pray. Then fighting at the wrong time, pulling the sword from the scabbard when they should be doing something else. Serving and praying and then deserting Jesus into the night. Then we see Jesus on trial before the Sanhedrin announcing himself, identifying himself as the I Am, as God, the creator of the universe. And then we experience yet again Peter's failure, yet again the failure of the disciples, yet again the failure in, in denying the Lord. I, I do not know the man. I tell you, I do not know the man, Peter said. And then in the appearance before Pilate, Jesus was silent. And when Pilate offered to release him, the people said, Give us Barabbas! What do you want me to do with uh, Jesus, who is called King of the Jews? Crucify him! The people yelled. And at each step, at each stage along the way, we saw that in every story, in every event, with every character, in every failure, in every betrayal, in every denial, in every shout, give us Barabbas, we have ourselves depicted. It's a story not about other people. It's a story about us and our betrayal, our failure. Our deserting of Jesus, our denial of our Lord, our cries for Barabbas. It's a story about us. Most of you know I put my sermons on YouTube every week. You can go and watch these messages on YouTube. It's watched, they're watched by thousands of people. Last week's sermon thus far has been watched by about 6,000 people. And it's amazing to me that that happens. It's also humbling to me when I see that happen. Well, but what you may not know is that every single day except for Fridays, I broadcast on a, on a service called You Now. And it's a live broadcast. I answer questions. And during Lent, I've been asked repeatedly pretty much every single day, did the Jews kill Jesus? Sometimes it's spelled J-E-W-S appropriately. Sometimes the bigotry is there, even in the spelling. Did the Jews, J-O-O-S, kill Jesus? And the reality is, even the Bible stories itself, all four versions of the Gospels, plus the creeds of the church proclaim that it wasn't the Jews who killed Jesus, it was the Romans. The occupying forces. The, the, the security guards of the Roman occupation in Jerusalem that killed, that executed, that put Jesus to death. Now true, the Jewish leaders, the religious leadership of the day, the Sanhedrin, the high priest and the other scribes and Pharisees and leaders of the temple, they were the ones who were responsible for creating false charges and then presenting Jesus before Pilate as a condemned criminal. They had their own ulterior motives for doing that. But that was their decision. Reflecting their hypocrisy. And indeed, I could have gone and looked at the failure of the priests, the failures of the scribes, the failures of the, uh, of the Pharisees, the failures of the rabbis. And had I been preaching to a bunch of clergy, that's exactly what I would have done. And what I'll be doing later this week in a retreat. Pointing out that religious leaders just as prone as anybody else and sometimes more prone to failure here. All of these stories 
reflect our own culpability in the death of Jesus. Yes, the Romans killed him. Yes, the Jews presented him. The Jewish leaders, the Jewish religious leaders presented Jesus to the Romans for execution. But theologically, the church has proclaimed for centuries, since the very beginning, it has proclaimed, we have killed Jesus. We are the ones who are responsible for his death. With every betrayal, with every failure, with every act of, of violence when we pull the sword from the scabbard, with every fleeing into the night, with every denial of knowing the Lord before others, with every cry, give us Barabbas and crucify him, we kill are responsible for, are culpable for, the death of Jesus. You can even see that in how the church has interpreted the Old Testament references to the suffering servant. Look at Isaiah 53. I'm going to paraphrase it here. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned every one of us to our own way. And God has laid on Jesus the iniquity of us all. The church looking at this passage, one of the suffering servant songs in Isaiah 53, Isaiah 53 verse 6. The church has looked at this passage and even though the Jews never saw it as the Messiah, the church looked at it and saw within it a typology of who Jesus would be. And the reason why he died. And the reason why he suffered. And the reason why he gave himself up for us. Because all we like sheep. We've gone astray. We've turned every one of us to our own way. And Yahweh Elohim, God Almighty, has laid on him the iniquity of us all. That's the message of Lent. The message we've been building to. Step by step, Sunday after Sunday, we've been looking towards the fact that we are the reason for this season. We are the reason that Jesus came and gave Himself for us. We are the reason He hung on that cross. And hence his words from that cross echo down across 2,000 years to us in an amazing way. For hanging on that cross, he says, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. And he says this just before, at least in the passage we have here in Luke, just before... The, the religious people, the, the religious leaders the, who are gathered around the cross are mocking him and saying, if you really are the Messiah, the chosen one of God, then come down off that cross. And as the, the, the Roman soldiers who were there were mocking him and saying, hail, king of the Jews, if you are the king of the Jews, come down from there. And even as one of the prisoners who was crucified with Jesus mocked him and said, save yourself and us. Which would be our cry. Or at least mine. If I was there with him. Come on. He's just said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. And here they are mocking him. And the simple fact is, the mocking is also our faith. Every time we sin. Every time we choose ourselves over others, ourselves over God, ourselves over righteousness, which is true balance, justice in life. Every time we choose ourselves, our own desires, our own needs, our own hopes, our own agenda over God and God's agenda for us. Every time we miss the mark of God's glory for us. We 
betray Jesus. We fail him. We pull the sword from the scabbard. We follow afar off. We deny him. We cry, give us Barabbas. We cry, crucify him. Every time, every time we fail, every time we sin, we deride Jesus. We mock him. And still Jesus hanging on the cross in an image that has been communicated across the centuries all over the world, Jesus hanging on the cross says in prayer to the Father on high, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing and we don't know what we're doing. Every time we fail, every time we stumble, every time we sin, we don't know what we're doing. We're putting him to death a little bit more again and again. And that's what Lent's about. A time to recognize our culpability in this event. That it's not just Judas, it's not just Peter and the other disciples, it's not just the Roman authorities, it's not just the Jewish authorities, and not just the people who were deriding him, it's not just the thief on the cross, it's all of us, every one of us, without exception, across the entirety of time and space, we have all crucified Jesus. And still Jesus says from the cross, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. There's a second thief on that cross, on the other side of Jesus. And when the first thief mocked Jesus and said, Come down from that cross and take us with you, he said, don't you realize, how can he possibly do this? You're under the same sentence. We are under the same sentence as he. And then he turns to Jesus and he looks at Jesus and he says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Powerful hymn has been written from that by the Taze community. A powerful song. Every time I hear it, it strikes me to the core of the importance of turning to Christ. And begging, pleading, asking for forgiveness. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me. When you come into your kingdom, Jesus, remember me. When you come into your kingdom, again and again and again and again, this song can be sung, pleading Jesus. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus' words, Echo strongly. Today, you will be with me in paradise. In Lent, we are called to recognize our culpability in the death of Jesus. We are called to cry out, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. We are called to hear Jesus say to us, Today, you will be with me in paradise. We are called to hear Jesus pray to the Father. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. We are called to turn to the cross and see in it the source of our forgiveness in Jesus' own prayer from the cross. Yes, as a sacrifice, but also as a plea to the Father. He who suffered and died for us, praying for us, 
that we who don't know what we're doing, we who have failed, we who have betrayed, we who have fallen away, we who have run away, we who have denied, we who have cried, crucify Him. Father, forgive them. For they don't know what they're doing. May we hear these words. And when we come to the table of the Lord, may we receive them afresh in the sacrament. And be touched and filled and transformed by the very grace of God in Jesus Christ, which does forgive us and carries us in to His kingdom. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And let the people of God say, Amen. listening to a sermon by Dr. Gregory Neal, Senior Pastor of the First United Methodist Church in Commerce, Texas, and Rector of Grace Incarnate Ministries. Copyright 2016 by Dr. Gregory S. Neal. All rights reserved. For more information and for other sermons by Dr. Neal, visit us on the web at www.revneal.org. That's www.revneal.org. You are also invited to visit us in person at First United Methodist Church, 1709 Highway 24, Commerce, Texas, 75428. This program was produced by Dr. Greg Neal.